Okay, guys. We're gonna swing our arms from side to side. And maybe the cape. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. We're going Mario on small battlefield. Um, I'll, oh, I was gonna mention this last set real fast. I really, really wish that they, that uh, Fawn and Mr. E had went to the small battlefield. Mm -hmm. Personally, that's what I'm gonna say. Because if we need to get right into this grand finals, yep. Fawn coming in from losers has to get a two. Uh, game streak and then get a reset to get a chance of winning Xeno 236. Oh my god, I'm dyslexic. 326 <laughs> tonight. And Loki? Starting off real good. Yeah, and I mean, I was going to point out this is where we started uh, their, I believe it was winner's semi set where Melly took it. This is where we started. We started on small battlefield and it was Mel like Melly was in total control, but we are seeing a very different game here, Mott. Vaughn only 35% and a stock up. Fun is warmed up. At least Melee has a couple, couple of games to warm himself back up after you know we were sitting for a while for the both losers matches. But I think once you get in your in your positioning, once you get back in your groove, in your in your style of play, Melly should be able to make this a much more even game here. But at the same time, Font is playing really really well with the Mario, which honestly lasts. <laughs> oh, turn around! A little bit Go of that silly way. Shenanigans here with the cape. Do it more often. I love the cape. As a mechanic, as a reflector, it turns you around. Hilarious mechanic. It makes a funny noise. It's gold. Oh I no. Punish on the, on the double shield there. And Fawn now already putting Melly in a precarious position. 71% but now getting sent off stage. This is where Melly gets to make his money as he does so with the axe calling out the jump. All right, Fawn immediately coming back down and not even ent entertaining the uh, Holy Cross I was throwing earlier. Going straight into our pla onto the platform and taking Melly into the air. Holy Water going to be coming in and instructed by the Nair, of course, comes out in the middle of Melly trying to get an up smash, I believe. All right, back to our setting Melly up off stage once again, but still so good at avoiding these fireballs when it comes to setting oh, up wow. his tether. All right, ready for the roll in. Instead, going to be catching the recovery uh, in the air. We can back him a little because his Mario is playing tonight. 137% on Melly, and we're slowly starting to make it a little more even here. And we are, oh, we are definitely throwing out our hurt box, our hitboxes. I love this more passive spacing that Melly is doing when it comes to edge guarding, avoiding potential reversals like that one, just land into up smash. But Melly has been playing the edge guarding so much safer since this, uh, since the set started. You have to. Uh, Fauna is doing a really good job of kind of just staying a little more in the air on the platform or just rushing straight up down on Melly. Melly gained the roll in twice, both uh, punishing both options from this ledge, and then you existed. So here's an axe in your face. Yeah. All right, Flood online for Fawn. We haven't been seeing it too much in this set or the last one, but here we oh. go. The reverse cross confirms. Trying to look for a tech situation with the up tilt. That shield is looking <laughs> super low. And thankfully, the Holy War did not hit that shield. It hit Melly in the face instead, which might give Fawn a, or could have given Fawn an opening into Caden's game to her favor. Another Double down her into the up air instead, rather than the up B. I was the up B personally. Yeah, and Melly all of a sudden just in control of this game one. Every single hit now putting Fawn in a precarious position, having to recover to the ledge Ooh, against Belmont. Give me that. You take this. Or this, or this. We jump up. Nair. All right, how do you make your way back into center against Belmont? This absolute flurry of hitboxes. Double jump, air dodge in, but the F-Tilt is there to cover. 173, a forward throw from Belmont will absolutely be doing it at ledge if he catches Fawn shielding. And that should be it. That's going to be it. Fawn, despite such a dominant performance in the first two stops, Belly was able to dig his heels in and find that momentum. Absolutely. And it's only more of an uphill battle from here because now you have to, you just have to win two games to get a reset and then play yeah. the matchup again. And I can imagine this gets a little bit tiring because it's a matter of what do I possibly do? I make this adjustment, Melly adjusts as well. Utilizes the cross coming in backwards and you have to be so aware of these little things coming back at you. Now, we're going right back into it. Game two, going over to the Falco instead Ooh. on Fawn's end. So that's going to be very entertaining. 
yeah, I think we're going to be seeing like something of a similar game plan of just having the projectile to try and make some space. You have the fireball, you have the Falco laser, as well you have the frame one reflector. It's just going to be a better reflector, a better tool to take space, and of course, just that rushdown capability of like as soon as Fawn gets her hands on Melly, big damage is coming out. If I get my little hands on you, <laughs> that's my, all Fawn's looking for. My weird little feather fingers, let as me, soon as I get them on you. Let me get my Lugia fingers on you real fast. <laughs> the Lugia fingers. Because they got, they got feathers and fingers. Once she gets in, it's going to be an easy 20 to 40%, depending on how far we can take it. But that framework reflector is going to be the biggest matchup. And I think you can kind of see that in Melly's gameplay, already adapting to, uh, to utilize Ooh. more of its normals rather than the projectiles. Yeah, and I mean, we did see in the past couple of games, like, the Mario was doing pretty well in neutral, but just didn't find the same amount of value out of those neutral wins as a Falco finds. Oh, gonna be completely negating the, uh, the, side, the side B as Fawn tries to get back on stage, tries, I mean, not even on stage, tries to find some kind of positioning for herself when we do with the reflector on the cross, gets the grab, trying to go for the upper, and we definitely connect it. All right, I love the idea of the lingering neutral air from Fawn, but the patience from Melly keeping him alive Big in the punish. second stock, still alive here. I think still has the double jump, but too far for the tether, unfortunately. Fawn now taking a very dominant lead in game two. And once he gets it up here, Falco may have to struggle a little bit trying to get on stage. Thankfully, with the uh, with the with the uh, uh, B, we do kind of slow down our our options. We can roll right through the, the holy water and then go in with that forward air into the shine, into the up air. Oh, trying to go for it down there, like, you know, a little bit, a little bit to the action right now. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, man. Fortunately, Melly calling out that phantasm and bringing us into it pretty much dead even. Fawn, though, with the stage positioning, setting Melly up at the ledge once again. Beautiful read on the tech, trying to get another lingering hit to catch the tether, but Melly's so difficult to pin down at the ledge. And also, so is Falco. Every single time Melly tries to co to contest the space, the space with the uh, with the whip, Falco's right there, way past it, punishing you. Now, finally, oh uh, Melly is set up a little bit too high on that Firebird, so we gotta be really, really, really careful here for Fawn. And as I say that again, she's taking off stage even longer. We're going up for the Holy Water, trying to read in the uh, the roll in, but. The Holy Water does take it in for us. 102%, almost completely unanswered. Vaughn has just spent the last, like, 45 seconds getting ledge trapped and reset. It's just as as soon as Fawn is able to touch the ground, find her footing in center go. stage, it could be huge. But Melly with the down tilt, setting her back up at ledge once again. Fawn shaking her head, knowing that that was a, just a bad position to be in. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, hopefully, Takes that adjustment and, and makes it into her own, uh, you know, advantage state. But right now, we're trying to get a little bit too cheeky, a little bit too greedy, trying to go offstage against Belmont, where you already know Melly's already back on stage, and now he's prepared to uh, to contest you even longer with the with the ledge play and, and the ledge, uh, ledge guarding. Melly now one stock away from being the Xeno 326 champion and is looking primed to do so as he racks up this damage every single hit, setting Fawn up back at the ledge, just setting up that win condition. That cross up there, making sure that Fawn not able to find the back air off of the down air on shield. Oh, that's a big punish, the Phantasm on shield. Oh my gosh, this is actually... I want to say I do like that Melly did adapt the place out a little bit here to be a, uh, a lot more close and personal with Fawn. And then when you have to, you set up the water, the Holy Cross, and the Axe, of course. But right now, because of the fact that Falco can just kind of reflect or whatever, we're going a little bit... Oh, you're like, bye-bye. Just a little bit too far for the tether, unfortunately. Fawn now one stock away from getting herself a Game 3, but has to fight her way through the absolute onslaught of Belmont pressure. Unfortunately, setting herself up at the ledge, trying to find an in in neutral. Uh oh, that's going to be... Ooh, ooh, I'm a liar. I Wait. spread misinformation on the internet sometimes. It's okay. We all do a little bit, but we got a nice 56% going on and only continuing as we see Fawn start to get a little... Uh, start to get something started here because of the fact that finally you miss something, I can actually take my turn and take my time to get something, uh, get something started here to get us into a game three, but Melly... Not gonna be letting up anytime soon. Fun trying to keep her, uh, keep herself in this game. 
But I feel like I want to comment. I, I do want to compliment Meli repositioning her forcibly. You see him rolling back towards oh. center stage, and Fauna can do anything about it. That was a very ambitious angle from Fawn. Tried to hit the ledge, but instead hit the stage. Now setting her up once again. Looking for a wall jump, perhaps. Oh, but an F-tilt yeah. is going to be all it takes for Melly to be your Xeno 326 champion. Oh, he's feeling himself. He's popping off a little bit. He knows he played fantastic tonight. Just absolutely dominant, taking grands in 2-0 fashion. Absolutely, and you know, Fawn didn't get the revenge story that we were all hoping for, looking for, but Melly showcasing that we are grinding. We are in our mm -hmm. grind era. So very, very happy to Melly for getting first place at Xeno 326 tonight. Fawn getting a very respectable second place, especially being able to go through and try to get the run back. And honestly, figuring out that, you know, the Falco was really working. Mm -hmm. the, the closest she had gotten to getting a game off of Melly. I wish that if we had gotten it earlier, we would have gotten a different result. But regardless, maybe next week, that would be what we play, the, the Falco. But regardless. Yeah. I, I do think what it came down to was, you know, getting more comfortable with the with the character, trying to get more value out of those neutral wins. Because a lot of it was, you know, Fawn would get like an up tilt or an up throw or something. And then just Melly would find a, a chance to air dodge out. Exactly. Um, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Right, Xeno 226, the, the Xeno after LNBM, which was a mm -hmm. very fun weekend and full of full of very fun memories. However, uh, that's all for us today. Please, please follow us. Yeah, please, please. you know, follow us at Force Armor, at Montaneva with a with two A's, two of them. With an extra A, because the yeah. other one's actually taken. It's okay, whatever. One <laughs> day, okay. one day she'll get banned, and one day I'm gonna take it immediately. But when that day comes, when Hell freezes over, is when I'll get that username back. But regardless, please follow House of Three Thousand on uh, Twitter through Devin Three Thousand. Yes, there we go, look at this guys. beautiful graphic. Support House of Three Thousand, guys. If you saw LMBM last weekend, Fire. that is all thanks to the wonderful production of House of Three Thousand. Follow Devin3000 on Twitter for all of the updates. Follow House on Blue Sky, on Twitch, on YouTube. You can come hang out in our Discord. And, of course, if you're feeling a little bit generous and you got maybe one of those Amazon Primes laying around, you can it's always free. throw... It's free. You can throw a subscription our way. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, reiterate, yeah, uh, to, to add to what Forrest Summer said. If you guys did enjoy the LMBM production, we did the main and the quad stream uh, for all the local viewers. Uh, you're familiar. We did Blast Zone. It was a lot of fun. I think everyone had a good time. But yeah, if you if you uh, enjoy the production and and you support and you support what we're doing, subscribing helps so much. Uh, please subscribe on on Twitch. Uh, every little bit counts and it helps a lot. Uh, LMBM, uh, I think top three most tired I've been, but uh, <laughs> we made it and I slept for two days straight. <laughs> we were so EP. Yeah. Oh, uh, and it was EP moment. It was so fun. But regardless, please come out to Xeno Weekly every single Wednesday. That's what you're watching right here, right now. Only $15 in total for venue and entry together. So come here, please. Free free house on Twitter. Or you, please. Please, please. We, we need it. Yeah. But come out. Come play. It's really fun. We had a bunch of new people come in. I believe from LNBN they heard about, you mm -hmm. know, Xeno every week. Because I, I was here and they were like, hey, are you a TO? And I'm like, no, I'm not. But I know everything <laughs> about this place. And they were like, well, I'm new here. Y that could be you. Yeah. Come out. It's okay. Offline is so much fun. Please we, don't hate yourself and play Wi-Fi. Please. Please. We, we, talk, we talked about being in our grind era, and, like, this is the local that you want to go to if you're in your grind era. Oh, if you want to like, go to a... If you're in a grind era, bombs. <laughs> Every single Monday, please talk to us about bombs real fast. New my beloved. bullshit. Yeah, yeah really, exactly. Really insane, we are actually. back on it, back on that exact same bullshit. 7 p.m. every Monday. We it is quad streamed. There is no like commentary or anything. But pretty much every single set that you get there is going to be both streamed and locally recorded and uploaded to the House of Three Thousand YouTube, where you are going to get so much homework. Just go VOD review. Just yeah. do it. It'll make you better. How many VODs we get today, Devin? Like 70? Uh, we got a lot. That's exactly a lot. That's a what lot. you love to see. You love to hear that. You, if you play today on stations one, twenty, one, twenty-two, twenty, no, nineteen to 19, 22, twenty-two plus the stream, you have a vod you have with homework. audio, with audio. So <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying with audio. So please follow House. Please subscribe to him on, on YouTube, on Twitch, on everything. Like donate everything. 
keep they're this, amazing people. Keep this Kirby warm in Please. the week. It's cold out. Kirby worked so hard this weekend production. He did. So easy. He really did. Yeah. On the other hand, that is all for us tonight. Once again, follow us on our Twitters. We do this as a uh, funny little side gig. It's really fun. I like talking. It is fun. <laughs> I, li I like talking about this game. We love talking about it's this fun. game. And so is Devin. Devin likes to produce this game. So help us out. Regardless, that is it for all of us. As Neo326, it's time to get home. It's time to get me a chopped cheese from the deadly. We gotta go home. We do. We're, we're gonna go be EB ourselves. So exactly. Yeah. Bye bye. See you later.